In this video, I'm going to be covering why I believe BNB may be a bit of a dark horse in terms of providing some sizable returns over the coming weeks and months. Not only has it got a great track record from previous cycles, but it also has utility and the technicals look very good at the moment as well. So let's get into it. Let's start with utility then. As I'm sure you all know, BNB is Binance's exchange token. Now, one of the reasons many have or still do hold BNB is for the reduction in fees when using the exchange. Of course, Binance, the largest exchange in crypto, a lot of people with high liquidity use it. And as you can see down in the corner here, you can see that you get a discount on your fees if you use BNB to pay for those fees. If we just move on to the next tab, you can see the breakdown of what that is. So as you can see, the more BNB you hold and the more volume you provide to the exchange, the bigger the discount. And even just as a regular user, as you can see, with a small amount of BNB, you can still get a 25% discount on your fees which is not to be sniffed at at all as well as this you've also got the binance smart chain bsc which launched in early 2021 and became very popular as it was an alternative to ethereum in terms of interacting with DeFi protocols including metamask thanks to the ethereum virtual machine essentially became popular due to it being a lot faster and cheaper than using Ethereum and so BNB was the token used for gas and still is very popular today as well. And if you remember, if you're around back in 2021, it caused a huge surge in the BNB token price, which we'll take a look at a little later on. Now, if that wasn't enough utility for you, there's also the Binance Launchpad as well. So I can only show you this on Google due to me being in the UK, which is technically a restricted region. Basically, if I go on any of these links, it will basically kick me out and say that it's not available in my region or country, which is a shame. But essentially, Binance Launchpad was a way or is a way of doing IEOs. So Basically, you put up your BNB, you pool it, and as a reward for committing your BNB, locking it up, you are rewarded with that IEO token. So a lot of successful uh, assets and tokens have come from Binance Launchpad, things like Near, Matic, um, and Fetch AI as well. So lots and lots of successes, some failures as well, though. So it is a big mag, a mixed bag. It's not a guarantee that if something comes from the Binance Launchpad, it's going to be a success. But however, as I say, more utility for the BNB token, people buying BNB, locking it up into in as a way of getting these free tokens. You can also stake BNB as well. And then finally, on top of it all, cherry on the cake, there is also bnb burns that take uh, take place every quarter as well so as we all know reduced supply increased demand that is going to drive prices up as well so as you can see plenty of utility and plenty of reasons to be holding bnb now before i get into the technicals i'd like to address a comment we received on one of our videos a week or so ago essentially criticizing us for suggesting people should invest in higher market cap assets or coins. Now, first of all, we're obviously not financial advisors, so we don't advise any sort of financial investment. All of our content is purely educational and speculative. But the advantages of looking at high market cap coins instead of low market cap coins are that A, it's just simply safer. They've generally been around for a lot longer and have higher liquidity. So it's easier to get in and out of them, particularly if you've got a higher net worth. There are some lower market cap coins that can be very difficult to get out of, especially in times of high volatility. On top of that, because they've been around for much longer, it's usually because they have that utility, as I've just shown with BNB as well. So there's more reason to invest in them as opposed to um, some certain meme coins or things that are just around for a matter of days or weeks, whereas these coins have been around for multiple cycles and there is a reason for that. Also, lastly, just going back to the volatility factor, with a lower market cap coin, if we do see a big pullback in the market, they are gonna perform a lot worse than higher market cap coins. So you are just that slightly bit safer, but of course, all crypto assets are volatile. So make sure you do research and make sure you don't invest more than you can afford to lose. With that out of the way though, let's take a look at the technical. So let's take a look at what BNB did in the last cycle. So as I mentioned, if you were around back in 2021, 2022, you will know that at the launch of uh, BSC, as I said, in early 2021 here, BNB went from around trading $40 up to the all-time highs of $692, almost in a straight line, a bit of a pullback in February. But apart from that, it was more or less 
a straight line up. So the performance on that was an incredible 1,500 plus percent, which is pretty crazy. Of course, highly unlikely that we're going to see those kind of moves again. How again? However, still potential for a decent move and a few multiples in my personal opinion. So not only did it do very well in the last cycle, but if we take a look at the BNB BTC pair, what you will notice is that back in the bear market of 2018, 2019, BNB actually made a run on BTC. You can see trading around here at about 0 0.012, rallying all the way up to 0 0.004. So if we take a look at what that is, as a percentage, you're looking at a 280% move on BNB versus BTC during a bear market, which is not to be sniffed at. So it just goes to show that BNB can perform against BTC when it's not doing too well itself. And even back here in the bear market of 2022, you can see BNB had this huge run from June 2022 up until November 2022 against BTC. So BTC going down and BNB outperforming, you can see another 116% move. So if we are going to see BTC trend sideways or maybe down over the next coming month, maybe BNB can make a run against it. As we have seen since March, you can see it's been an uptrend. So broke these weekly range lows back in November, deviated back inside the range and has held the range lows all the way from December through to March and now we're starting to trend upwards. We're above the weekly moving average 21 and we just need to break above this weekly mid range here at just under 0 0.009 and we could make a run for those weekly range highs and above there. In terms of the USDT pair, if we take a look, we have been holding this since we broke out of the weekly range um, this was when the legal troubles were happening, which are obviously all behind BNB now. We've been trending up, broke out of the weekly range, and as you can see, we've been holding $546 as a solid level of support. Multiple wicks below it, but every time zip back up and price closing above that weekly level. We're now looking to break this week's level of 606. As you can see, it's been a tough resistance. Uh, we've been trying to break above it since the end of March. We've only just, well, I say that we've obviously at the very start of the week, so we could well see another wick um, and a close back below, but we are trying to break it, as you can see. If we go down to the daily time frame, we've got a little bit of resistance here at 634. If we were to break above this, then I think that is a good indicator that we may well be pushing on to close above 606 and maybe attack that weekly level of 662. So we've not had a daily close above $634. Um, every single time of trying since the 13th of March of this year. So we're trying again today. You can see so far it's been rejected. But if we were to get a close above this over the next couple of days and hold it support, as I say, I think that could be the springboard up to 662, which is the weekly level and basically all time highs. And if we break above that, then who knows where we could go. If we just grab a fib, we can take a look at some potential um, targets using the fib extension. So let's put on the... Uh, 1.618 and the 1.272 so these are just local conservative estimates of where we could get to and as you can see that 1.618 coming in at basically a thousand dollars which i believe could be a very easy target should we break these all-time highs with just before that you've got the 1.272 coming in at about 830 ish dollars but yeah i think we could be in for a run on b and b as i say BTC at the moment, if we just take a look at that on the daily time frame, currently range bound. We've been range bound for the past couple of months since around February, March time. Range highs of $73,000, range lows of 60.5 and uh, daily mid range. As you can see, we're just trading above that, just above the moving average 21 as well. But if we were to continue to chop sideways, as I've shown you before, BNB has the ability to trade against B BTC, outperform it. And as I say, with us, in this very close to all-time highs we could see that explosion a little bit of volume a little bit of kick all that utility people starting to talk about it no one's talking about it at the moment and that is usually the best time to look to enter a trade or invest in an asset when no one's talking about it and as i say could be a bit of a dark horse could sneak up on people we are only a few percent away from those previous all-time highs we are about 10 percent move so we could easily move up break all-time highs and then all of a sudden people are scrambling to get a position so it might be 
a good time to start positioning. As I say, if you want to wait for confirmation, wait for that daily uh, candle close above 634, and I think we could be off to the races. So hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Are you invested in BNB? What are your price targets? And have you taken advantage of it in previous cycles? Drop it in the comments below. Let me know, and we'll see you on the next video. Thank <laughs> you.